Hey everyone, John Chow here from johnchow.com and welcome to the .com Lifestyle Vlog. I'm here with the San Clemente Outlet here in uh, South Orange County to uh, charge up the Tesla and check out cars and coffee. Let's go. The uh, last time I was here, it was raining and this parking lot was mostly empty. And today, ah, much better, much better. Not full, like normally there'd be cars here as well, but way more cars than last time. So let's see what we have this week. Here's an interesting comparison between the Range Rover and the uh, Mercedes-Benz Square. That's the uh, crazy 4x4 the Mercedes make. It's so much taller. My God, check out the, uh, the carbon fiber fenders. Yeah, sure, he's going off row. Yeah, okay. Good selection of vintage muscle cars today. Z28 Quamel, Quamel SS, El Camino, yeah. more Quamel SS, vintage Corvettes, and a nice Cadillac. Boss Hog Cadillac right there. Wow. There's a very definition of a hot rod right there. Don't drive it in the rain. No fender. Water's going to go everywhere. And you're going to get wet. <laughs> oh, wow. Check out that interior. Yeah. Not exactly, you know, positioned for heel and toe. Actually, where's the clutch? Okay, it's an automatic. <laughs> Polaris slingshot. A little bit of customization I see on it. It's got the optional windscreen. Uh, offers some protection from the environment. And this this aftermarket whale tail spoiler thingy my words and oh check out that trick exhaust too uh, kind of covering it up but yeah <laughs> yeah even though it's the, I guess it looks more like a car it's technically it's licensed as a motorcycle so you will need a motorcycle license if you want to drive it but uh, yeah Nice durable hard plastic seat. You don't have to worry about the environment. I'm pretty sure you can get wet and just wipe it right down. Manual transmission. These things are a lot of fun. They start around twenty thousand dollars, and if you want to, you know, uh, stop traffic, attract a lot of attention for the least amount of money, this will do it. 1966 Corvette. Uh, this is what it looked like before they made the split window. One thing cool about the engines in vintage uh, muscle cars is that it's not covered up. Unlike all the new cars today where it's covered up by panels, you can't see anything. But here you can clearly see the engine. I mean, there's a distributor cap that provides a spark plug. There's the air filter. You can see the carburetor underneath. You can see the uh, manifold, the uh, exhaust headers. Everything is available for you to look at, unlike today. With the newer muscle cars, you don't have to open the hood because there's really nothing to see. Check out this Corvette. It's got shaved windshield. I mean, yeah, the speedster look. And you need the roll bar since you lost the front, uh, <laughs> the front windshield. <laughs> nice white Porsche GT3 with a tasteful amount of yellow accents, including the yellow brake calipers and my favorite, yellow seat belts. That's right, those seat belts. Uh, I think cost an extra thousand dollars, you know, because Porsche can do cost, Porsche can charge that. Thousand bucks just to change color on the seat belt. If you, if you can get away with it, I see do it. This is nice, a classic Porsche Turbo. The big whale tail and everything. Wow, listen to this idol on this Pantera. Oh, he just turned it off. But that sounded pretty mean. It looks like three Lotuses, but the truth of the matter is, it's two Lotus and a Tesla. Let's see, we have a Lotus Elise and another Lotus Elise, and this here is actually a Tesla Roaster, the original first generation Tesla Roaster. And the reason why it looks like a lease is because, well, it's, it's based on the same Elise body. Uh, Tesla took the lease and just electrified it. Changed out the power plant, replaced it with batteries and electric motors, and this was the first Tesla vehicle. Tesla will be updating this roaster with the new 2020 roaster, 
So, uh, yeah, can't wait to get that one. Gonna be the fastest car in the world. Nice collection of vintage Porsches. Here we have the 944. Uh, oh, the, uh, the bathtub Porsche, classic 911, and a very stylish Corvette. I, I like this Lincoln. <laughs> Big, huge walking convertible. Uh, <laughs> Big interior, bent seats in the front, the fuzzy dice, and my favorite part of this car, the suicide doors. So this to open that away, this to open this away, and uh, Link actually bought that back. And uh, I think the new Continental has suicide doors as well. Volkswagen pickup, punch buggy, Volkswagen microbus, or punch buggy. You know, it's a good thing Sarah and I have a have a rule about no punching when you see punch buggy that causing coffee. Otherwise, I'll get punched all the time. Yeah, that's a nice interior in this micro bus. I like this sliding windshield. And this piece, that's, that's cool. That's cool. Of course, make sure your windshield wiper is down before you flip this up. That is one of the cleanest Buick Riviera I have ever seen. And yeah, I mean, everyone would recognize the shape of the Buick Riviera, but he totally debadged it. Uh, new paint, slammed down, shaved doors. There's, there's no door handle because, uh, yeah, he shaved the doors, so it was open for electronics. Interior, totally redone. Custom upholstery, really nice. That is the uh, coffee part of Cars and Coffee. So, you know, you come in to see the cars and have a coffee, that's where you get it. Well, this coffee truck and also the, uh, the Ruby servers are over there. BMW i8. This is supposed to be a BMW supercar to take on. Uh, actually, I'm not exactly sure. It, it does look cool, but it never sold well at all. And you can actually pick these up for like about $130,000, so not too bad. This is a second generation ZR1 Corvette based on the C4 body. It was an engine made by Lotus, four cam, 32 valve, one the only Corvette motor with a dual overhead cams and four valve per cylinder. Yeah, the, uh, the, current, the current ZR1, it's just a supercharged over, uh, overhead valve motor. This thing, I think when it first came out, made 375 horsepower, which was unheard of back then. Uh, today, 275 horsepower is, I guess, pretty much standard. Uh, he even got the original uh, sticker, 1995 Corvette Coupe. So you can see the car space price was $36,785. And the engine, this motor, this motor added $31,258 to the cost. Yeah, the, this motor costs almost as much as the car. See, this is what I mean about new uh, new cars just covering up all their engine parts. Right? You see this Corvette. I mean, instead of seeing the, you know, the, the manifolds and all that stuff, all I see is a piece of carbon. Now there you go. Look at that, huh? Everything is shown in always glory. That's how it should be done. And this is a beautiful Jaguar. Wow, this is one of the coolest and more rare Corvette you can get. It looks like a standard uh, C6, yeah, C6 convertible, but what makes it unique is this motor. It's a natural aspirated seven liter, 427 cubic inch V8. That's right, pure power. No turbo, no nothing, just a one big motor. And it's got a manual, manual six speed transmission yeah, and it's got all the, uh, you know, the big wheels and racing hardware. So this is a, it looks like a mild manner Corvette convertible, but don't mess with this thing. It is extremely quick and extremely fast and it's ready for the track. Speaking of rare Corvette, this is a Callaway Corvette. So made by Reese Callaway. You can see it's a supercharged motor, makes a 580 horsepower. And I believe there should be a plaque signed by Callaway himself inside the car, yeah. Yeah, there it is. I can see the plaque in the center console. Tells you what number it is and, you know, they only make a few hundreds of these a year, so. 
two rear Corvettes, a 427 convertible and a Callaway. All right, cars and coffee. Ah, nice. Smokey and the Bandit Trans Am. For those of you who remember the, uh, the old movie Smokey and the Bandit, uh, that movie made this car famous. Ah, how appropriate. A vintage muscle car with a very modern LS6 motor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, that motor is unmistakable from any, window, any angle. <laughs> What's that? The LS6. All right, so, and it's next to a Tesla Model S. So, gas guzzler, no gasser. That's pretty much old and new at its finest right there. <laughs> new tech, old tech. Most Corvettes are set up for road course and handling and track. This one is it's set up for the drag trip. I mean, you can tell by looking at the skinny wheels in the front, <laughs> the, uh, the Mickey Thompson drag radios in the back. Yeah, this is set up for for the drag strip. <laughs> Let me get a better look at the wheels here. There they go. There, there, there. See? <laughs> drag radio. This thing will just stick to the ground and just launch this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, like I said, I, I'm not going to judge. If you want to set up your <laughs> your machine, if you want to set up your track for a vet for a drag strip, that's fine. Right, we are now at Supercar Row and it looks pretty full compared to the last time when we had almost no cars. So we have uh, the GT3 RS, <laughs> track focused, track ready. And we have uh, another, oh, is that a GT3 RS as well? Is that a GT2 RS? That's a GT2 RS. So basically these are both GT cars. This one has a naturally aspirated 4 liter and that has a turbocharged makes like 750 horsepower this thing makes like about 520 or so but they're they're both ready for the track there you go magnum pi ferrari the 328 <laughs> ah the uh, the ford gt kit by super performance and the cobra kit but also by super performance so you know these are if you like the looks of the ford gt and the uh, the cobra uh this company sells complete cars even and you can customize it uh, add new modern power plants at the old power plant so you get the reliability of the newer newer generation of power plant and the looks of the vintage racing cars how are you good good <laughs> audi r8 another audi r8 oh it's something i haven't seen every day they're not that badly priced an accurate nsx pretty cool like this is i, I kind of call the NSX the neglected supercar because on paper and in road tests and reviews it did really really great uh, but nobody bought them nobody bought them and as a result you can pick up one with very low mileage for like hundred and thirty thousand dollars I mean if you think about it that's an amazing value I mean it's a good-looking car it's got a really unique power plant you know it's it's a hybrid electric motor, uh, gasoline and hybrid motor. The interior looks really well done, but just nobody bought them. Yeah. From Lamborghini Newport Beach, they bought down their Performante Spider. So this is a, supposed to be a hardcore track weapon, but uh, being Lamborghini, they made it into a convertible, which is kind of cool self-defeating purpose but kind of cool nevertheless so you can see uh, some of the unique touches the Lamborghini this is a carbon fiber but it's called crushed carbon so it's uh, they take a bulb it's carbon fiber they crush it instead of making it into that you know those carbon fiber weave that you really know so you can see uh, it's on all the vents the center console the crushed carbon and it's also on the uh, the spoiler here and more crushed carbon yeah i love the uh, this exhaust right out the back it's like a bazooka yeah. yes it, it spits fire scare the guy next to you yeah. <laughs> yeah so this spoiler is something called the ala system so what it does is it draws air in here goes up this spoiler so this spoiler is actually hollow so air comes in here goes up the spoiler and then exits all these little vents down here 
So all these little vents exit here, and they can change the pitch on how these vents exit, and depending on the speed, they can actually use it to generate more drag or more downforce or less drag for higher top speed. Wow. And it can vary. So this side can be varied from that side. So they can oh, really? have one side going drag and one side applying more downforce for corners. Yeah, as you're turning. Yes. So it's a unique piece of technology. And unlike the Yachter spoiler, it's a lot, it weighs a lot less. So that's the advantage. Ah, nice. Ferrari 360, convertible, classic vintage Ferrari. See, back then, the engine is exposed. You can see everything. No cover up, no nothing. So check it out, you know, show off that motor. And you can see the oh, inside, oh, he's got an aftermarket sound system. You can see the focal subwoofers right there. Here's the Ford GT. We see here almost every car and coffee, along with this beautiful McLaren 720S. And this paint job is not the standard McLaren orange. It is a new orange that McLaren created. And I think it just looks stunning. It, it, it really does. It's beautifully done. Yeah, look at uh, the, the way this uh, door system works makes entering the car a lot easier, especially for me because I'm so tall. I don't have to worry about hitting my head here. Yeah, yeah the, the owner of this car outfit with a good selection of good option. Like he didn't went too crazy. Like he left that as aluminum instead of carbon. So that's good. The uh, orange seat belt is a nice touch. Probably add another thousand bucks to the cost. And yeah, he didn't went too crazy with the carbon. Like he, he didn't get this in carbon. He left that all just in red or black, no carbon there. So. <laughs> nice, very nice. All right, continuing right along, we have the Ferrari 458 Italia. This is the last of the natural aspirated Ferrari V8. It was replaced by the 488, which is a turbocharged V8. This is the McLaren 650. And next to it is a 675 long tail, a limited edition car, uh, based on the 650, but a lot more powerful and a longer tail. And a Ferrari F12, very nice. Ferrari F12. And we ended with the Camaro, the two Camaros, and the Camaro of the uh, organizer of Cars and Coffee. And over there are the Ruby's girl that serves the coffee. Okay, that's it for the, this episode of Cars and Coffee. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, this happens every Saturday from 9 to 11 here at the San Clemente outlet in, San, in uh, San Clemente. So if you've got some free time, come on out and check it out. I think you'll really enjoy it. It is family friendly and dog friendly as well. See you guys next time.